Hey friends, today I'm bringing to you a brand new wood project. The weather is beautiful today. I've had a ton of fun being creative, but I am getting sawdust everywhere. So this is going to be the perfect opportunity to show you guys my brand new VacLife cordless handheld vacuum. Back Life Easy Life. This vacuum is super easy to use. It is lightweight and has a sleek design. So that is going to totally save your wrist. I watched some reviews on this and I am so excited. It's easy to buy, cost effective, and shopping is all through Amazon. So really convenient. It's so tiny. Got an extra filter, quick start instructions. This is to clean the filter, which is nice. Let's get this thing charged up and see how it does. This vacuum charges up. Let's head outside and look at today's project. Y'all know I love a good wood project. I had these pieces here in my stash for quite a while. I had a couple four by fours. Here are some two by twos and I just didn't know what to do with them. They weren't coming in handy for any of my projects. So I started looking around and found some beautiful farmhouse corbels for inspiration. I will list the dimensions for these corbels down in the description box below so you can check back for reference. On my large corbels, I cut the 4x4s. One side was 20 and a half inches, the other side was 24 inches. Using my miter saw and a straight cut, I started by cutting all of my base pieces like that. Now on the smaller 2x2s, I made them a little shorter. I did 10 and a quarter and 12 inch with 14 and a quarter and 16 inch. So a little bit variation on the sizes and the reason I changed them up was just because that was the amount of wood I had. On the large ones I made a set with one single and on the small ones I made two sets with a single. So this was just how much scrap wood I had on hand. Now on each of these L pieces we'll call them I am now making a 45 degree cut. I just took my miter saw and swung the arm over to the side to make my cuts. And now it's time to make the middle brackets. I measured the distance in between the two sides and came up with 20 inches. I grabbed a two by four and using a straight cut on the miter saw, cut out my 20 inch pieces. On the smaller pieces, they were 12 inches and 10 inches. On these middle brackets, we will do a 45 degree cut on each end, not parallel to each other. On my Ryobi miter saw here, I can just swing the arm from side to side, making this super easy for me. I do all the cuts on the right and then do all the cuts on the left. Always be sure to learn about the power tools you're using and wear your protective equipment. Time to put these guys together. We're gonna drill a few pilot holes and use some six inch wood screws to secure our large corpals together. Just for some extra hold, I used Gorilla Ultimate Wood Glue between the two wood pieces. The tools and the glues and products I'm using from Amazon are all linked down in my Amazon shop below. And the paint and products as well as these corbels will be listed over on my website, upcycledbybree.com.
For the middle brackets, again, a bit of wood glue and some shorter wood screws. These were, I believe, two inch wood screws. We'll secure the middle pieces and they will be completely put together. So a few cuts and a little bit of construction and you have yourself a gigantic, beautiful industrial corbel. On these smaller pieces, I did a single screw to glue the two L pieces together and then I just used my pneumatic nail gun to secure the middle brackets since they were a bit smaller. My favorite part of the whole process is distressing these guys. I grabbed a hammer, I grabbed a metal file, and I went to town. Again, wear some eye protection, maybe wear some gloves so you don't get splinters. And be careful, but get some of that aggression out and have some fun with it. Try not to make this look too patterned. Try to be random with it. It's harder than it looks, but you can do it. Once I have everything distressed, it's time to sand. My random orbital sander, my cordless one, is uh, waiting on a part, so I'm using my DeWalt sander and it worked just fine. I used a 60 grit sandpaper, which is a very rough piece and it really smoothed and rounded out the corners beautifully. Once I have them all sanded down, I'm now using some Midwax Dark Walnut Stain. This is oil-based, it's very stinky, so make sure you're using it in ventilation. I've got the gloves on. I gave it one good coat of stain, and this is gonna be my rustic dark base for these corbels. I do want to seal the stain up to protect the wood, but also to keep the stain from bleeding through when I paint. So I'm using Zinser Spray-On Shellac. I give every corbel a couple of really good coats. It does dry fast, but I let it dry all overnight so it's ready for paint the next morning. The next morning I decided I didn't like the way the screws looked, so I grabbed some of my Durham's water putty. It's super si simple to use and easy and quick, so I love it in a pinch. I mix the powder up with water and I just wipe it on. It dries quickly and I can paint right over it. All right, y'all, it is time for paint. This is Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. It is a powdered form. You mix it with water to combine, and that is what forms your paint. Now, you only mix up as much as you're using as it does not last. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so I poured in one cup of warm water, then one cup of powder, and now I'm using a blender to mix it really, really well. You can mix it by hand. You will get clumpier paint, so be aware of that. Now. There is a product called Extra Bond. It's an additive you can add to the milk paint to help it adhere to your surface. I did not use any Extra Bond today because I want some chipping and crackling. I do have my Klingon brushes, my favorite brushes out there. I've got my F30 and my F50. They are flat brushes, a smaller one here to get in the crevices and the larger one to cover the surface area. I did have to do a couple coats of the white to cover up my dark stain, but as you can see, this milk paint is going on very easily. If you are new here, you're going to be able to find all of the products I'm using and my flips over on my website, upcycledbybree.com, but I always link all of that down in the description box below as well. The color I'm using here on the large corbels is Creamy by Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. It's a beautiful off-white color and it just gave such a classic farmhouse finish combined with that dark walnut stain. Here is the coverage after just one coat. So as you can see, it's still looking a little bit streaky. Um, there's a spot, you know, here where I got a little too much paint. Now I knew I was gonna be distressing, so I wasn't worried about perfect coverage, but this is too splotchy. I do need a second coat. You can see as I go back on with that second coat though, it is good coverage. 
The Klingon brushes are made with a synthetic bristle, which helps minimize brush strokes if that's something you're worried about. But they're also super easy to clean, even with this milk paint, which is not as easy to come out of brushes as some paint will be. I just put my brush in water overnight and the next morning that paint virtually falls out of the bristles. I did mix up some of the Sweet Pickens O Olive color as well. It's this beautiful vintage green because y'all know I love my green and I couldn't just do white. So on a couple of the smaller sets, I did the O Olive color. First time I've used it myself and I am in love for sure. Drop me a comment below. Are you digging the O Olive green color or the creamy white color better? Let everything dry for an hour or so out in the sun. Look at this beautiful chipping and crackling we got, y'all. And this is why Sweet Pickens Milk Paint is unlike any other paint I have used. Such authentic, chippy, old-looking finishes. Now, when you sand over that chipping and crackling, that's when this beautiful distressing happens. You can just seal over that crackle if that's the look you're going for. I wanted the chippiness, so I'm using 150 grit sandpaper and just going lightly over my pieces until I get the desired chippy effect. Sealing is going to be as easy as building and painting. This is Sweet Pickens Beeswax. It is a paint and wood sealer. So you can go over raw wood or you can go over your paint with it. It is a nice creamy wax and it smells amazing. I will note that it does take a bit longer to dry than the DIY clear wax. So just keep that in mind. But it is super easy to apply and provides a beautiful finish. You can see here it really brings out the color of that wood and makes everything pop. Wood that was really cool and old and chippy, but the ends of it looked really unfinished here after I cut it. So, this is the white wax in the Sweet Pickens beeswax line, and again, nice and creamy, soft, and it just softens that fresh wood and helps combine it better with this old paint. So, don't be afraid to use waxes to help your pieces look authentically old. Look at the final reveal. Let's clean up our mess. So, this is the new van and as you can see, I had to get in and out of it several times to run to the hardware store and I got sawdust everywhere. I attached the crevice tool to my VacLife cordless handheld vacuum and got to work and look at that amazing suction. That sawdust is coming up easy. So it is low noise, but strong suction due to the powerful motor. Not only was there sawdust, but there was dog hair. Maisie sheds everywhere and the brush tool on the carpet is a game changer. I go to the car wash, I try to use the vacuum there with the plastic end and it does nothing for the dog hair. Now I took it over to the sawdust Again, game changer. That sawdust came up so quick, this little tiny vacuum covered a large area very well. I was able to vacuum my van, a little area around my workspace inside, and get the dog hair off of the couch. It took me about 20 minutes altogether, and I still had plenty of battery life left. To charge it, it charged up super quickly and was ready to use that evening. I wanted to try out the built in LED light. The light makes it super easy to use in the evening and in all of those little dark corners during the daytime. Now, if y'all want a 15% off code for yourself to grab yourself a cordless VacLife vacuum, I will pop it here on the screen and link it down in the description box below for you as well. All right, y'all, here is a look at these huge, beautiful farmhouse 
corbels. What do y'all think? I cannot believe I have not thought to make these before. And y'all, this is just the beginning of my corbel craze. These are pretty basic. I have more ideas. I have some new equipment and there are going to be more corbels coming your way very soon. I have all of these beauties listed up on my website if you are interested in purchasing them. And if you recreate some of your own, I would love to see them. All right, comment down below, which is your favorite? The green, the white. My favorite is the green corbel with the black dowel support beam in the middle. I am going to have to make more. These pair with the chippy blue paint are a very close second. So leave me a comment below. I'd love to know what y'all think. And let me know, are you going to try to create some of these industrial farmhouse corbels for yourself? If so, please drop them in my creative group over on Facebook. I will link that down below for you as well. Thank y'all for coming along today and doing some really fun wood projects with me. Those are always a big hit here on my channel. If you did like this video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button and please share this video out with a friend. That's going to help this YouTube channel continue to grow, which will help me continue to bring you even more amazing content. If you enjoyed the Backlife cordless hand vacuum that I used today, I will also link that information down in the description box below for you as well. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye, friends. Somebody's cooking. My window's open. It smells delicious. Mm -hmm. ah. There's a place for my umbrella. <laughs> Would you look at that? Did you really? Are you hiding? Did you just eat like six ounces of chicken? Are you are you in trouble? You have chicken juice on your head. <laughs>